Hey guys, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Solutions and today I'm going to be talking to you about vitamin D and kidney health. The kidneys play an essential uh, role in activating vitamin D and regulating the circulating level of vitamin D and chronic kidney disease is associated with a lot of changes that can happen with vitamin D level and uh, activation. We are trying to make it uh, as simple as possible here in this video, but if you are interested in more details, so please make sure you check out our blog that uh, we wrote about vitamin D and kidney health. So let's do this. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin and it plays uh, an essential role in bone formation and uh, bone health, but also plays a lot of important uh, roles throughout our body and we'll talk about this in more details in the video. Vitamin D is uh, actually made from uh, cholesterol and it, uh, there's two types of vitamin D that I would like you to just remember. One is vitamin D2 which is the plant derived vitamin D or ergocalciferol and the other one is the uh, vitamin D3 or the animal derived vitamin D which is uh, the one that we make in our skin uh, from sun exposures. Our skin is actually our factory that make vitamin D3 for us with uh, UV rays and sun exposure. But vitamin D is not only a vitamin, it is essential and, and we can get it from the diet, but also acts as a hormone because we can make it uh, in the skin, but also because it has many receptors that are actually found to be uh, present in many of our cells all throughout the body. Pretty much all our organs have vitamin D receptors. And yes, we call uh, vitamin D as the sunshine vitamin, but there are a lot of factors that plays in uh, our body's ability to make vitamin D. So uh, sometimes it's not enough to get vitamin D from uh, sun exposure uh, because it varies uh, based on geographic uh, location, based on uh, uh, you know, our skin color, and based on also our genetic uh, abilities. But luckily, we can get vitamin D from uh, a diet that is uh, high in vitamin D and also from high quality supplements. And the food that is high in vitamin D is basically fish uh, and also uh, egg yolk. Um, in addition to that, the plant, the only source of plant based vitamin D is actually mushroom. And what's good is that you can actually um, increase the amount of vitamin D2 in mushroom by uh, by uh, sun exposure. Many people associate vitamin D with milk and juices because the beverage companies are so smart, they market their, their beverages by saying that these are a good source of vitamin uh, D and calcium, but these are actually, um, they're, they're, these, the vitamin D is actually added to the, uh, the, in the manufacturing process to make juices that are not good for you look like they are good for you. And a couple of words about activating vitamin D. So whatever uh, vitamin D we make in our skin or we eat in our food uh, or in, from high quality uh, supplement, uh, it goes and circulates in the blood with a, a protein called vitamin D uh, binding protein, which binds all kinds of vitamin D, but then it goes to the liver to become active and then and a second step of activation occurred in the kidney which produces the most active form of vitamin D. And throughout this process there are uh, multiple enzymes, I'm not going to go into details, you can read about them in the blog, but uh, any genetic variation in these enzymes can lead to severe consequences and changes in vitamin D levels. So what happened to vitamin D with uh, kidney disease? Uh, a lot of things happen uh, during that process with, with uh, loss of kidney function. There's a gradual decline in vitamin D level. There's a lot of factors that play a role in why we are not able to uh, produce active vitamin D as kidney function decline. One of them is uh, phosphorus retention. And another uh, one is basically the kidney tissue ability, I mean, the loss of kidney tissue will decrease the amount of vitamin D that is uh, being activated. But really what's interesting is that 80% of people were found to, to have, 80% of people who have kidney disease were found to have low level of nutritional vitamin D. And uh, we don't really know the reason behind this, uh, but 
Uh, all in all, we, we know that vitamin D level is lower in uh, advanced kidney disease, especially as the kidney function decline, we see gradual decline in vitamin D level, whether it's the, uh, the active or the 25-hydroxyvitamin uh, D, which is the nutritional, what I call the nutritional vitamin D. Uh, a little bit of word about the parathyroid uh, hormone. So the parathyroid gland, uh, these are uh, four glands located here. They're uh, next to the thyroid glands, uh, and this, uh, this is why uh, the, the gland is called the parathyroid gland, paramine next to. Um, so it's not the thyroid, so don't confuse it with the thyroid. Again, so the, the most important uh, job of parathyroid hormone is to actually maintain calcium at normal level in the blood, because ca calcium uh, in the blood is important for our muscle function, and the most important muscle of all is our heart. And with loss of uh, vitamin D activation, we, uh, would, with uh, advanced kidney disease, we'll, we'll start noticing a decline in the absorption of calcium from the gut, uh, and uh, we're, we'll lose the ability to put that calcium uh, where uh, we end up in the bone. So in, in advanced cases, with the calcium levels start declining, and the parathyroid want to maintain the calcium at normal level, but it does that by making sure that calcium comes from wherever possible. So it could be coming from your gut, it could be coming from reabsorption of calcium from the kidneys, but also it could be coming from the bone. So activating, so increasing amount of parathyroid hormone because of decreased calcium level in the blood can make your bone weak. And uh, a question that we get asked often is, what is the normal level of uh, vitamin D? What is the target level of 25-hydroxyvitamin uh, D? And really the answer to that is we do not know uh, for sure. Many studies were done on that. Um, you know, level below 15 is definitely not, not good for you. But uh, we believe that, uh, we argue that levels uh, of about 50 and above are crucial for uh, our body's health and, and uh, ability to fight infection and for, to maintain good uh, heart and, and vascular um, function and for our immune system, in addition to uh, our bone health. So unfortunately, uh, conventional medicine has failed to address the issues with vitamin D and kidney health. And if you read many of the guidelines, they're all based on expert opinion that we do not know what level of vitamin D should be, what level of parathyroid hormone should be. And in the past, they used vitamin D analog for uh, prevention of uh, vitamin D related uh, bone disease. And, and there are some successes in that um, and uh, they're still going right now. But when we uh, talk about uh, vitamin D and we address vitamin D, uh, and bone health in uh, kidney patient and vascular health for kidney patient. It's not only enough to think about uh, that. We need to think about many dietary factors, calcium absorption, magnesium, and uh, other nutrients that play an important factor in uh, activating vitamin D and many genetic and epigenetic uh, changes that can uh, uh, lead to uh, active or inactive vitamin D because there might be more than uh, just a recommendation of get some more sun or get some good quality vitamin D supplement to achieve an adequate level in some individuals. So it is really important that we uh, individualize and personalize the approach to vitamin D to achieve great kidney health and bone health.